Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about the best choice for beginners from 10 different huge designer fragrance houses. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through 10 different houses. I'm gonna give you the fragrance that I think would be best for somebody that's just getting into fragrances to check out. And maybe if you've been around fragrances for a while and you haven't smelled one of these, you should check them out. So let's jump into it. Let's check these out. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit. There are three different houses where I'm gonna feature two fragrances. Yeah, rewriting the rules already. And that's just because I think with a couple of these houses, you know, it's kinda, you know, a little up in the air as to which one would be better. And feel free to uh, play along. And as we go through these houses, if you think I made the wrong choice, feel free to berate me. It'll make me very sad. <laughs> Why can't we just agree that this is right? <laughs> or maybe don't berate me, just say the fragrances that you would have chosen. How about that? That sounds nicer. We're gonna kick things off with Dolce & Gabbana. And with Dolce & Gabbana, the fragrance that I would suggest to somebody who's just getting into things and wants to check out the, the easiest to wear fragrance, the most approachable from each house, the one I would suggest is the one, Eau de Parfum. Amber, tobacco, ginger, cardamom, and grapefruit, some of the notes in this scent. And I feel like this one, you just kind of have to know. You just, you have to. If you're really getting into fragrances and trying to learn about fragrances, and you're trying to get a, a killer rotation, you know, just stunner after stunner that you can cycle through and have people just think, man, that dude always has it together. He's always smelling tip top magoo. Maybe not tip top magoo, but whatever they're gonna say, should be tip top magoo. But if you're trying to learn about fragrances, you need to know this one. It's a fragrance that comes up all the time. It's one of the best date night fragrances ever. It does not project all that much, but it's a really alluring, sexy type of scent. Big compliment puller. It's sweet, it's spicy, smells amazing. I would go for the Eau de Parfum over the Eau de Toilette because I think it's one of those times where the Eau de Parfum is actually an improvement in basically every single form over the original. And if you really like the one Eau de Parfum, there are a bunch of flankers that you can check out as well. But that's where I would say you should start. Next up, let's go to Versace. Now I picked two from Versace and uh, both of these are just hyper versatile anytime type of sense. One maybe a little bit more so than the other, but it is Dylan Blue and Pour Over. I think for the house, this is probably your easiest introduction. This one smells a little bit similar to Chanel Allure Homme Sport, in case you're listening and not watching, that's Versace Pour Homme. And then Versace Dylan Blue is Versace's blue fragrance that they basically made to try to compete with things like Dior Sauvage and Blue de Chanel. So Dylan Blue has both bergamot and grapefruit. It's got ambroxan and incense. And this one you can use basically year round, daytime or nighttime. This is one of those hyper versatile scents that you basically can't screw up. Well, I guess some people can screw up anything, but it's hard to screw up wearing that one. Versace Pour Homme has citrus, neroli, tonka, and musk. This is gonna be more of a fresh, warm weather, summertime type scent. Good in spring and early fall as well, and also great at the office. Neither one of those is too terribly expensive from discounters. Actually, a good amount of these are fairly affordable from discounters. And I would say that that's where you should start for Versace. Let's just go ahead and knock out another house where I had two choices. We're going to Dior, and for Dior, Sauvage Eau de Toilette, and Dior Homme 2020. Now, a lot of people would say, no, 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 Dior Fahrenheit or Dior Homme Intense. And I love both of those scents. Problem is, if we're talking just straight up beginners, people that maybe haven't smelled a whole lot, they are gonna gravitate more towards Sauvage or Dior Homme 2020 than they are Fahrenheit or Dior Homme Intense. Because I've spoken to a lot of guys over the years who have said, you know, I tried Dior Homme Intense back when I first got into fragrances, didn't really jive with me. I didn't like it at all. Didn't know when I would wear it. Just thought it was a waste of money. And then they revisited years later and they were like, oh, I love it now. That's the issue. If you're not really well-versed, we'll say, on how a lot of different things smell or can smell, 
Dior Homme Intense is the type of scent that you're gonna smell and be like, I would never wear that. Now there will be the random one-off person who smells it and goes, love it right away. <laughs> you know, first fragrance they ever smelled, Dior Homme Intense and they love it. That happens, but it's rare. And with Dior Fahrenheit, you kind of have to have a love for throwback fragrances from the 80s. So Dior Sauvage, everybody should probably recognize this one, Bergamot Ambroxan Pepper. It's metallic, it's uh, really powerful, projects, lasts forever. Huge, huge compliment puller. Dior Homme 2020, a little bit newer. And this is your modern, woodsy, masculine, sophisticated type of scent. High Sui Super, Cashmere, Vetiver, some of the main focal points of this fragrance, along with a bit of pink pepper and a touch of bergamot. Dior Homme 2020 got hated on heavily when it was released, including by me, but over time I have grown to really like that one. So those two, those are the ones I would suggest. If you're a little bit younger, I'd probably suggest Sauvage initially. If you were middle age or older, I'd say Dior Homme 2020. Although realistically, either of those is versatile enough that anyone can pull them off. Now, Carolina Herrera. This fragrance, I am not a huge fan of, but it is the one that I would probably point people toward if they were wanting to just begin scratching the surface of the house. It is Bad Boy Eau de Toilette. It's got tonka, cacao, amberwood, and pepper as some of the notes in the fragrance. It's got a really eye-catching bottle. Maybe a little bit love it or hate it. Some people are gonna think it's really tacky and cheesy looking. Other people are gonna see it and be like, man, that's super cool, that stands out. And I'm not saying either one of those ways of thinking is the right way. I'm just saying it's uh, divisive a bit. So this one is warm, sweet, and chocolatey. A lot of people really do love this fragrance. If we're talking just your average everyday guy or girl. In the world of fragrance collectors and stuff, it doesn't get a whole bunch of love. But absolutely, if you are starting out and you want something that's gonna be great in the fall or the winter, especially during the evening, Bad Boy Eau de Toilette is worth checking out. Like I said, as of right now, not a massive fan, but take me and shoot me back into the past 10 years or something like that, and I bet I would be. Now we are up to Gucci, and for Gucci, just guilty. Eau de Toilette. It's got lavender, lemon, cedar, and patchouli. It's fresh with a bit of sweetness. Yet again, another compliment puller. Realistically, all of these are big compliment pullers. That's one of the things that helps them sell so much. Gucci Guilty Eau de Toilette has lots of flankers. They come out with one pretty much every year, and yet the original is still, I believe, the best seller of the whole bunch. And so I would point you toward this one as a hyper versatile fragrance that maybe centers more around spring, summer, and early fall for uses, but it's also office safe and would be great on a date or a night out also. Yes, it definitely does get dunked on, just like Bad Boy, but there's a reason it sells like crazy. Crazy. That's because people love it. We're talking about stuff today. It's just easy to wear. Up next, Yves Saint Laurent. And for that house, why Eau de Parfum would be my choice. Apple, ginger, sage, amberwood, and tonka, some of the notes in this fragrance. And this one, along with Dior Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel, would be pretty much my blue fragrance trifecta. If I were gonna tell you the top of the line designer blue fragrances on the market nowadays, the ones that just absolutely kill it in terms of compliment factor and versatility, as well as having a good quality to them, it would be those. Why Eau de Parfum? Blue de Chanel, probably Eau de Parfum and Dior Sauvage. EDT or EDP on Sauvage. So this one is a little bit different from a lot of the other blue fragrances because it uses apple in the opening as the focal point of the fruit sweetness instead of citrus. A lot of times it's gonna be bergamot or grapefruit. I believe you've heard bergamot listed off on a bunch of these already. This one uses apple and then combines it with ginger. So you're getting that, that blue fragrance opening with that poppy zingy ginger just here with apple. In the dry down, you've got a great amber wood with a bit of warmth and sweetness from that tonka. Why Eau de Parfum is one of the most versatile scents you're ever gonna find. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It does everything well and has great contrast as it dries down. Why Eau de Parfum, that's where I'd point you to, Reeve Saint Laurent. Now we are on to Prada, and I could have gone with Luna Rosa Carbon, but Luna Rosa Carbon smells really similar to Dior Sauvage, so it'd be a bit redundant. So I think if you were going to get into Prada, 
the first scent nowadays that you should smell. It's probably just Prada Loam. Iris Neroli, Violet, Amber, and Pepper, some of the notes in this scent. And with Prada Loam, you're gonna get that very clean, soapy, fresh kind of vibe that Prada is really well known for. Previously, you would have found that in fragrances like Prada Amber Pour Homme or Prada Infusion Dome, or actually a number of the infusion fragrances. But nowadays, Loam is the fragrance people are going to go for if they're looking for that Prada soapy feeling and immense scent. And of course, after you've experienced Prada Loam, you could check out Loam Low and Loam Intense, which basically take that DNA and make it a little bit fresher for warm weather in the case of Loam Low, or a little bit richer and deeper with a leather note, better suited for cool weather in Loam Intense. So we have three houses left. Next up, Giorgio Armani. So with Armani, I went with Profumo, Aqua de Gio Profumo. C notes, bergamot, incense, and patchouli, some of the notes here. And with Armani, it really comes down to either Code or Aqua de Gio. Now, for me, I love both. I think Code is great, I think Aqua de Gio is great. But Aqua de Gio, the original, was my signature scent for a long time. Love the fragrance, always will. So I guess I'm a little bit partial to Aqua de Gio. Now, Profundo is the one that I wear the most often nowadays. But Profumo, I feel like, is the one that most people have kind of springboarded into Aqua de Gio with over the past few years. That bit of incense in there gives it a little additional depth, not completely unlike Versace Dylan Blue, where you add that little touch of this nice, mm, sweetly smoky incense that helps contrast the aquatic notes and everything else going on in there. And I think that Aqua de Gio Profumo is a great year-round kind of fragrance. Hyper versatile, really, really enjoyable. And uh, if you wear that, you really like it, you can start exploring the other Aqua de Gio's and get into code two. Now we are to Paco Rabanne. For Paco Rabanne, it's the last house where I've got two fragrances. So those are gonna be Invictus Aqua and One Million Lucky. I know some people are going to be like, no, man, you need just the OG 1 million or something like that. But I feel that nowadays, these two probably are going to be the best for just hyper versatile usage, which if you're somebody that's just getting into fragrances, you probably want something that's going to give you that versatility. So Invictus Aqua was originally released in 2016. People really loved it got discontinued, it was a limited edition, then they brought it back, which is the one that you can find nowadays. The issue is the fragrance was changed a little bit and the original was a bit better. Still though, for somebody just now getting into things, they will have never experienced the original, so who cares? Kind of one of those things where uh, if you don't know it existed, then it doesn't bother you. Or if you've never experienced it, you know, if you didn't have the joy of wearing it and then it was ripped from your hands, never to be returned. <laughs> Invictus Aqua has grapefruit, has C notes, and ambroxan. It's got this bubblegummy sweetness to it, but it's very aquatic and fresh at the same time. Definitely does have a bit of a youthful tinge. It's really versatile, as I mentioned before. Very likable, even if I'm not the biggest Invictus fan personally. And then One Million Lucky is a really interesting fragrance because it's got this kind of juxtaposition of freshness and then this richness and this density. So on the one hand, you have notes like plum and honey and hazelnut. These notes that you would typically associate with something you'd wear during the winter or the fall when it's really cold outside. Then on the other hand, you've got ozonic notes, grapefruit and amberwood. So notes that you would typically associate maybe with a blue fragrance you reach for in summer. It does for me lean a little bit more towards spring and fall time use. So kind of neutral weather, good during the day or the evening. And I would say that it's surprisingly unique while at the same time maintaining its mass appeal. So one million lucky, that's the other one I'd suggest. Last up, Mont Blanc. And with Mont Blanc, I gotta say, Explorer, also known as Designer Aventus, which I've said now 52,000 times. Could have also gone with Legend, but Legend really is kind of their take on Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce and probably everybody has smelled fierce. At least if they've been within 750 feet or so of an Abercrombie & Fitch store, 
then you've smelled fierce. I think Explorer is really good for a couple of different reasons. First off, it has what pretty much all these have, which is that that high usability factor, if you want to call it that, the versatility complements, all that stuff that we've been talking about. The other thing that's good about that one is the similarity to Creed's Aventus, which is the most well-known men's niche fragrance on the market. So essentially, if you smell this and you go, man, I really like that. I wonder what a very luxurious take on this would smell like. That's Creed Aventus. You should check it out. So in some way, shape or form, it might work as a little bit of a gateway to niche fragrances. Creed is viewed as a gateway niche house for a lot of people because the fragrances are easy to wrap your head around. They're easy to wear, but they do have that luxurious side to them. So Explorer has bergamot, pink pepper, and broxen, and Akigala wood has a really nice opening, very fresh with pops of that fresh spice from the pepper. And nowadays, with the price that Explorer goes for at discounters, I think it's a great buy. That is one of the least expensive fragrances out of everything here. Actually, I think it probably is the least expensive and everything about it is great for a designer release. The bottle is nice, the attention to detail is there, the fragrance is great, and the usability is through the roof. So those would be my choices. If somebody who really knew next to nothing about fragrances but they were wanting to get into them, ask me, hey, I want an easy to wear Versace or Dior or Paco Rabanne, whatever. This is what I would recommend. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know the different choices that you would make for these houses in the comments. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.